Yesu. Now welcome our friends online. Just look in that camera and just welcome them in the name of Jesus. You are so important. We love you. Tunawapenda watazamaji wetu. Keep tuned because good things are happening here. Endelee kuungana nasi maana mema yanatokea hapa. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Let's be seated. Nataka tuketi. Let's appreciate the praise and worship team. Tuwashukuru wana sifa na ibada. I'm continuing with the message the mystery of honor. Ninaendeleza ule ujumbe siri ya heshima. As I waited on God and prayed, nilipomsubiri nikimngoja Bwana katika maombi. I realized that there are certain things that can lock people out of God's covenant favor and blessing. And there are things that can unlock those doors without even a lot of struggle. Nikagundua kwamba yapo mambo yanaweza zuilia watu kuingia katika baraka za kiagano na pia kuna mambo ambayo yanaweza wafungulia watu pasina kukua na kujitabisha. You see the Bible says these things that have been written in the scriptures are written for our example. Biblia nasema haya yaliandika kwenye maandiko yaliandikwa kwa ajili ya vielelezo kwa maisha yetu. And so that if we do things that they did and they failed we also will fail. Ikwamba iwapo tutafanya waliyoyafanya wale walioshindwa na si pia tutafuta njia hiyo ya kushindwa. But if we do the things that those who succeeded did we also will succeed. Na iwapo tutayafanya yale waliofanikiwa waliyafanya tutafuata njia yao ya ufanisi. And God has never left us without clear direction. Wala Mungu hakutuacha pasina na muongozo kamilifu. The choice is always in our hearts. Chaguo kila mara lipo kwetu sisi. Is either we believe it or we reject it. Ni kwetu tuamini ama tukatae. He said my people perish for lack of knowledge. Anasema kwingine iko kwamba watu wangu wameangamia kwa kukosa maarifa. And it is not because there is no knowledge. Lakini si kwamba hakuna maarifa. It is because they rejected knowledge. Lakini anasema ni kwa sababu mumeyakataa maarifa. You can receive knowledge but what you do with it is in your power. Unaweza pokea maarifa lakini kila utakayefanyia maarifa ni katika nguvu zako. God can pick you from any level in life if you do the things that he has commanded. Mungu anaweza kakuokota na kukuinua kutoka mahali popote pa maisha iwapo utatenda yale ambayo amekuagiza. That's why David was picked from the uh, the bush taking care of his father's goats and sheep. Ndio sababu yule Daudi alichukuliwa vichakani akichunga Nobody regarded him to be anything but he had honor in his heart for God. Hakuna mtu aliyemchukulia kitu Daudi, lakini Daudi moyoni alikuwa na heshima kumwelekea Mungu. And that alone elevated him from being a, a shepherd to a great man. Na hiyo pekee ikampandisha kutoka mchunga mbuzi akawa mtu mkuu mfalme. So it is important for us to understand this mystery of honor. And ni vizuri kwetu kutambua hii siri kubwa inayoitwa siri ya heshima. Because it unlocks a lot of things that have been kept for you even the things that your eyes have never seen. Hukufungulia mambo yaliyowekewa wewe ambayo hata macho ya kwako hakuyaona. We saw a good example that God gave to us. Na tuliona mfano mzuri wa mtu ambaye Mungu alitupea sisi. That is Abraham Isaiah 51 verse 3 verse 1 to 3 Huyo ni Abraham tunaangalia kwenye Isaya 51 mstari wa kwanza mpaka tatu The Bible says listen to me Anasema hivi nisikilizeni You who follow after righteousness Ninyi mnaoifuatia haki You who seek the Lord Ninyi mnaomtafuta Bwana 
That is a specific people that God is addressing. Iniongeleshe watu fulani amba mungu amewalenga. A people that have a quest, a desire, a passion to get God. Aina ya watu amba wanatamaniyo na shauku kubwa kumpata mungu. A people that have a desire to experience the move of God in their lives. Watu walio natamaniyo na nja kubwa kuona mtembe wa mungu kwenye masha yao. That's why he says, you people that I'm talking about, listen to me. Anasema, enyi watu nini naongea barizenu. I know you are following after righteousness. Najua muna ifuatia haki. I know you are seeking for the Lord. Najua muna mtafta buwana. Many of us may spend days in prayer and fasting. Wengi wetu uchukua siki nyingi za mfungo na maoni. Seeking to know what is God saying about my case. Tukitafta kuuliza Mungu wasema nini kuhusu na hali yangu. And so he says now listen to me. Anakwambia basi umeulizia nisikilize. Listen to what I am saying to you. Nisikilize ninachokwambia. Now this is the example I have set before you. Who ndio mfano na kielelezo nimeweka mbele yako. If you can look at this example and study to know what I did when I called him, then you will tap into something that this man had. Ukimwangalia mtu niliyemweka kama mfano, uangalie aliyoyafanya na kile nilichomfanyia, nao ukayafanya. He says, look to the rock from where you are hewn. Uangalie ule mwamba amba ulitolewa kwa kuchongwa. Look to the hole of the pit from which you have dug. Angalia lile tundu la shimo ambalo ulichimbuliwa. Look to Abraham your father. Muangalie Ibrahimu baba yako. And look to Sarah your mother. Muangalie mama enu Sarah alia waza. I called him alone. Nilimuita peke yake. And I blessed him. Na nikambariki. And I increased him. Na nikamuongeza, nikamfanya kuwa weki. I know there is the place of grace. Najua kuna mali ama kazi ya neema. Which is a divine election without works. Ambaye unateuliwa kiungu pasina kufanya tendo lolote. But I want you to know even grace has a place to land. Nataka welewe ata neema inaitaji jukwa mali pakutua. It is everywhere but the grace has a place to land. And the grace lands in a heart of a willing soul and a willing heart. Neema ikopote lakini inatafta jukwa la kutua. Utafuta jukwa la moyo ulio na ihiari na kutaka na kueshimu. And it is a heart that is respecting, honoring, and looking at the or esteeming the God who is able to lift and elevate him from that position that he is in. Ni ule moyo wenye kueshimu na kudhamini mungu alo naweza kuondo huyo mtu kwenye yo hali na kumpandisha. So God is saying to you, take a direct gaze to Abraham. Munga na kuambia, mutizame Ibrahim. Study him in other words. Kwa maneno mengina mdadizi mchunguze. Get to research. What is it that made this man such a great man? Tafiti mchanganuwe ujue ni kipi kilichomfanya kuwa mfanikiwa. Because this man displayed a unique sense of honor. Mtuyu adionesha aina yeshima ya kipeke. In his generation. Katika kizazi chake. And because of what he did, God chose him. Na kwa sababu ya kila lichokifanya, haka chaguliwa na mungu. The reason is this, God honors those who honor him. Sababu kuba ni kwamba mungu huwa yeshimu, wanao mweshimu. According to 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 29. Kulingana na Samueli wa kwanza mbili. Eli had been given a very high position in the nation. Eli 
alikuwa ametukuzwa sana kwa kuani mkuu katika nchi he was a high priest in the nation alikuwa ni kuani mkuu katika nchi everybody including the kings consulted with him kila mtu ijumlisha na mfalme waliomba ushauri kwake everybody came because there was a man they were coming to kila mtu alikuja maana kuna mtu alimjia according to malachi it was important that people seek knowledge from the mouth of a priest kulingana malaki kwamba ilifaa watu watafute hekima kwa kinywa cha kuani so he stood in 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 between god and men and because of that he had to hear what god is saying and and release it relay to men and hear what men are saying and relay to god alikuwa ni mjumbe aliyewekwa kati ya mwanadamu na Mungu ayasikia ya Mungu awape wanadamu asikia malilio ya wanadamu ambao akilishia Mungu in other words he had been placed in the position of a mediator between god and men yani kwamba alikuwa amewekwa kama mjumbe kati ya Mungu na wanadamu but the bible says he disrespected his position and disrespected the god who had lifted him to that position. Bwana sema alikosea heshima nafasi aliyopewa na akamkosea heshima Mungu aliyempa nafasi hiyo. And because of that he honored his children more than he honored God. Kwa sababu ya kaheshimu watoto wake kuliko Mungu wake. And the sacrifices that people were bringing they were dishonored by this man. Sadaka zilizoletwa na watu zilizotakatifu so zikakoshewa heshima na Mungu. Why do you kick at my sacrifice and my offerings which I have commanded in my dwelling place? Mbona wazipika teke sadaka zangu na dhabihu nilizoamuru na kuagiza patakatifu pangu? And you honor your sons more than me. Na kuheshimu wanao kuniliko mimi to make yourself fat with the best of all the offerings of Israel my people kujinonesha na sadaka nzuri za watu wangu Israeli therefore the lord god of israel says hivyo basi mungu wa Israeli asema i said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever nilisema kwamba nyumba yako na nyumba ya baba yako itatembea mbele yangu milele but now the lord says lakini sasa hivi bwana asema be it from me jambo hili liwe mbali nami for those who honor me maana waniheshimiwe i will honor nitaheshimu and those who despise me wanao ni dharau shall be lightly esteemed hawatahesabiwa kitu one thing that great uh, gave or brought dishonor or disaster to the house of Eli is the way they handled what belonged to God and because they did not honor what God had already requested or desired that they honor as stewards the bible says god got angry with them na kwa sababu walikosea heshima vile vitu walivyopewa na mungu wawe watunzaji wa hivyo vitu walikosea mungu heshima na kakadhalika god says all tithe belongs to me bwana sema zaka yote ni yangu so that belongs to god basi hiyo ni ya mungu now when you use the tithe to honor your children or to pamper your children to pay and feed your children pay for their fees and give them comfort and disregard that it is a dishonor to what god has given or commanded as his own unapochukua zaka aliamuru mungu kwamba ni ya kwake ukaitumia kwa tengeneza watoto wako kupelekea shule ama kuwalisha hapo utakuwa umeheshimu God still has a lot of things to do with your life Mungu ana mengi ya kufanya na maisha He has a lot of things to release into your life Ana mambo mengi ya kupeana kwenye maisha And as it was in the garden of Eden 
na kama ilivyokuwa kwenye bustani ya Eden God made sure that he gave Adam everything that he needed in the garden Mungu alihakikisha amempa Adamu kila alichokitaka Every comfort he needed kila starehe aliyoitaka Every authority that he needed over the creation Mamlaka na utawala aliyoutaka juu ya But God set only one thing in the same garden lakini Mungu akaweka mti katika bustani. He had the right to eat of every tree. Alikuwa Adam ana haki ya kula kila mti. But there was one that was meant to be the test of honor. Lakini mti mmoja ukawekwa pale kama mtiani wa heshima. That one tree was the test of honor. Ule mti mmoja ulikuwa ni mtiani wa heshima and if he honored that he had access he would unlock even things that his mind had never fathomed at that time angeheshimu jambo hilo angefungulia mambo makubwa ambayo hata fikra yake haingeweza kuitaka he would have overcome the temptation to eat the tithe in the garden Iwapo angeshinda ule mtiani wa kukula zaka bustanini You see the devil is fighting the tithe in every place read the social media every time people will say tithe is not of God it is not in the new testament it is not a, a whatever whatever so people will always fight that the reason is the devil knows that the tithe is a test of honor Amen. Na ndiyo sababu wengi wanapingana. Shetani ameleta uzushi kwenye mioyo yao kushindana na fungu la kumi. Maana fungu la kumi ni mtiani wa heshima. And when you do what God tells you to do, you access, you unlock even the mysteries that you had not ever known. Na iwapo utatii na kufanya alichokwambia Bwana kumheshimu utafungulia mafumbo makubwa ambayo huna habari yake. God said about Eli, I dishonor you because you have dishonored my sacrifice that I commanded. Mungu akamwambia Eli na kukosesha heshima na wewe na kunyang'anya heshima maana ulinikosea heshima kwa kukanyaga vya kwangu vitu. Because you you, dis, you despised what belongs to me, I commanded it to come to my house. Na ulikosea heshima kile nilichoamrisha kija kwa nyumba yangu and you honored your children more than me na ukaheshimu watoto wako kuniliko then i also will dishonor you i will lightly esteem you nami sitakuhesabia wewe kuwa kitu so that is to say hiyo ni kusema the quality of honor ya kwamba uzito wa heshima yako is demonstrated by the attitude displayed in your offerings and sacrifices inaoneshwa na aina ya moyo unaohudhirisha kwenye sadaka zako zaka na matoleo this is not a prosperity gospel This one is the life source that God has set in his law. Nataka uelewe huu ni uzima Mungu ameutia kwenye sheria zake. If you block a river from flowing, the downhill will be dry. Iwapo utauzulia mto kutiridika kutoka chanzo, kule mwisho kutakauka. That's why Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 the Bible says Malachi 1:6 A son honors his father Mwana kumheshimu babake and a servant honors his master Na mtumishi kumheshimu bwanake If then I am a father or the father Iwapo mimi ni baba kwenu I am the father mimi ndiye baba where is my honor heshima yangu iwapi and if i am the master iwapo mimi ni bwana 
Where is my reverence? Kicho changu kiko wapi? Says the Lord of hosts. Asema bwana wa majeshi. And he is speaking to you priests who despise my name. Na naongelee ninyi makwani mnaodharau jina lake. It's not talking to people out there. Unafikiria naongelesha watu wa nje? He's talking about those who seek righteousness, those who are after the heart of God. Hawa no itfuatia haki na kutafuta moyo wa Mungu. All of us born again, spirit filled, are counted as the royal priesthood. Sote tuliookoka tumezaliwa mara ya pili, tunaitwa ukwani wa kifalme. That we may offer sacrifices. Ili kwamba tumtolee Bwana sadaka. Each one of you is a priest in your own right. Kila mmoja wenu wewe ni kwani mali pako. And you cannot sit in a priestly office without sacrifices. Wezi ka na kutumika kwenye ofisi ya ukwani bila sadaka. And the test of your success in that office is in how you honor the quality of the kind of honor you are giving is based on your attitude towards the sacrifices mafanikio yako kwenye ile afisi ni kwa jinsi unavyoheshimu zile sadaka zako that's why many people will sit in the church many years and nothing changes in their lives ndio sababu watu wengi wataketi kanisani muda mrefu kusibadilika chochote kwao because of the factor of honor lacking in their lives kwa sababu ya kipengee cha heshima kukosekana kwa maisha yao because of the factor of honor kwa sababu ya kipengee cha heshima so he says you offer us seven anasema ninyi mwatoa you offer defiled defiled food you need to see how your sacrifices are related to honor nataka uangalie jinsi sadaka zenu zinahusiana na heshima if you understand that things will begin to flow in your life not because the economy is good or bad because there is a flow from the throne room of god vitu vitatiririka kwako si kwa sababu uchumi umefunguka hapana God fed the children of Israel for 40 years in the wilderness. They never bought new clothes for 40 years. They ate food morning and evening. Mungu aliwalisha Waisraeli miaka 40 wasi hawakubalisha mavazi, hawakukosa chakula asubuhi jioni. They didn't have hospitals. None of them died of a disease. Hawakukua na hospitali wala hawakukufa magonjwa because God said I will not put any of these diseases that were in Egypt upon your lives. Akasema sitawatia magonjwa ya Misri juu ya mili zenu. So God made sure that they are taken care of because of what they did when they left Egypt. Mungu alihakikishwa kwamba ameshughulikia mahitaji yao alipowatoa kule Misri. Everyone that died did not die of a sickness they died because of disobedience. Kila aliyekufa jangwani hawakukufa kwa magonjwa wala njaa. Any time they dishonor what God said God releases disaster. Kila mara walimkosea heshima kichapo. So it is possible for God to make your life better as you live a life of honor. He will release the secret things into your life. Inawezekana Mungu kuiboresha maisha yako iwapo waishi kwa heshima maana atakufungulia mambo ya siri. He says you offer defiled food on my altar. Manitolea vyakula vilio na jinsi madhabahuni kwa. Then in your heart you say. Masema hivi moyoni mwenu. In what way have we defiled you? Sasa Mungu tumekukosea heshima wapi? And God says by you uh, say the table of the Lord is contemptible. Masema kwamba hiyo meza ya Bwana Uh, It's contemptible. Why should I give 10% to the church and I have things to do with that money? Yaani fungu la 10 nitoa kanisa na watoto wangu. Why should I build the church and I have houses to build myself? Ati najenga kanisa na kwangu sijajenga. Why should I do this when I have 
listen you honor god first god will make sure things happen in your life iwapo ukimheshimu mungu kwanza atahakikisha mambo yatakufanyikia mazuri kwako and you say verse 8 Nani mwasema hivi? You offer the blind as sacrifice is it not evil? Eh, matoa sadaka vipofu. Amuoni hiyo ni kitu mbaya. When you offer the lame and the sick is it not evil? Mkitoa sadaka viwete na gonjwa, uoni hiyo ni mbaya. In other words, the best you keep for yourself, the remains is what you bring to the house of God. Vilivyobora unajiwekea, vibaya takataka mwamtupia Mungu. Then God says, can you offer what you are bringing to the house of God to your governor? Anauliza governor wenu, mnaweza mtolea hiyo, mpeleke kaza wazi. Is he going to be pleased that you brought such a thing to him? Atapendezwa na wewe eti ulimletea zawadi ya kipofu. Would he accept you favorably? Je, atakuridhia? You carry 50 bob to the governor umebeba shilingi 50 na governor and you have 10000 in your pocket alafu ya 10000 zimefika you see when we bring anything to god god does not look at what we have given he looks at what has remained tunapomtolea mungu aangalie chenye umetoa anaangalia kilichosalia so he measures your honor your respect based on what you have given not 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 on based on what you have given but what you have remained with Anapima heshima yako si kwa kile ulichokitoa lakini chenye kimebaki na wewe. <laughs> and the attitude that you used. Na ule moyo uliotoa ulitoa kwa hiari. It is expected for sons for you to honor your father. Imetarajiwa kwa wana kumheshimu baba yake. And to honor your mother. Na kumheshimu mama yako. That's why where it all begins. Inaanzia hapo. Ephesians 6:1 you know it children obey your parents in the Lord for it is right honor your father and your mother which is the first commandment with the promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Now if you honor your father and mother according to the bible according to god's command when you honor your father in the physical biological or those who took care of you when you honor them the bible says it becomes well with your life and you earn long life by that honor how much more is it when you honor your heavenly father anakwambia kama ilivyo maandiko imesha tuamuru watoto waheshimu wazazi wenu Watini ili iwe heri na nyinyi vivyo hivyo anasema hivi iwapo ye Mungu ni baba na siniwana kwake ah tukimheshimu kama ilivyo maandiko ilivyosema siku zetu zitakuwa njema haitakuwa heri na sisi ah listen sikiza you can never say you honor your father and mother and yet you never communicate with them wezi kusema unamheshimu babako na mama yako na uzungumuzi na wao It doesn't matter what wrong they did the bible doesn't say honor them because they are good the bible says just honor them Haikuambi waheshimu maana wanakuongelejaga vizuri anasema inasema waheshimu If you send a text to your mother make sure your father receives fast Ukituma ujumbe wa arafa kwa mama yako tanguliza baba yako If you send a text to your father make sure your mother also gets the same ukimtumanishia baba akisha umetumanisha kwa mama pia because there are things they have done to bring you to where you are kuna mambo waliyokufanyiwa kufikisha mali umefika god used them to give you a physical understanding of the effort that the heavenly father has done in your life mungu amewatumia wao kama vielelezo kukuonyesha jinsi baba wa mbinguni amejitoa kwa maisha yako it doesn't matter how rich your father is haijalishi baba ni tajiri ya maskini i repeat it does not matter how rich your father is haijalishi baba yako ni tajiri namna gani the little you have take it to him kichaji ama kidogo liko nacho mpelekee baba and let his heart rejoice 
Moyo wake ufurahie kupokea ulichompa. It is out of a happy soul of your father that the blessing will continue to flow because the that which you have given expresses the honor you have for him. Ni kutokana na nafsi yake maro yake ile changamka baraka inatoka hapo. Hicho ulichompa ndicho kinasababisha hiyo furaha. Shout amen. Amen. I, I, I'm teaching this so that you may get yourself into a better position as a child of God. Na kufunza hii ni kuweke mahali pazuri kama mtoto wa Mungu. Because it's the will of God for you to prosper. Unajua ni mapenzi ya Mungu kwako kufanikiwa. It is the will of God for you to prosper. Ni mapenzi ya Mungu kwako ufanikiwe. Are you listening to me? Unanisikiza? Are you listening to me? Unanisikiliza? When you bring your offerings to the altar, unapoleta sadaka zako madhabahuni. The tithe, zaka, seed, begu, and everything that you bring. Akila kitu unachokileta kwa Mungu kama matoleo, you're brought to the house of God. Umeleta kwa nyumba ya Mungu. And that meets the needs of the house. Na hiyo inashughulikia mahitaji ya nyumba ya Mungu. And listen, it does not necessarily meet the needs of your pastor. Ukweli ni kwamba haitashughulikia mahitaji ya mchungaji wako. Okay? Mm-hmm. It does not necessarily meet the needs of your pastor. Na si kwamba kila mara itashughulikia mahitaji ya mchungaji wako. God has blessed me to travel to many churches. Mungu amenibarikia nimesafiria kwenda makanisa mengi. I've seen places where people have prospered greatly immensely. Nimeona mahali watu wamefanikiwa pakubwa. Allow me to say this in as I digress so that you get it we'll continue this tomorrow morning. Tutaendelea asubuhi mji asubuhi lakini waje nitoke kwa barabara nisime kitu hapa. My father's advice. Waje nikushauri kama ushauri wa baba. There are churches that I know yapo makanisa nayajua that the pastor never does any shopping kwamba mchungaji wa hilo kanisa afanye ununuzi wake kwa chochote what mama gets to feed the pastor always surpasses what they need as a family kile ambacho wana, uh, mama anatumia kulisha mchungaji kinazidi kwa familia yao nzima it surpasses inapita they make sure that there is fullness of food and any other need there are men and women in the church who pay the school fees they make sure that the children have gone to school they take care of them listen let me give you an example in Nikupa this house mfano, tu hapa, hapa, kwa, kwa when we came into this city tulipoingia katika mji wa kisumu my concentration was on the gospel kwangu mimi ni injili tu Lusigi saw that Lusigi akaona hiyo It became his responsibility ikafanyika kama jukumu lake It was a greater burden to him ulikuwa ni mzigo mkubwa kwake to make sure that my children go to school kuhakikisha watoto wangu wameenda shule He would take my first daughter to second school go there make sure it is paid and uh, make sure that there is nothing that we are worrying about as a family na kisha amechukua bintu wangu mkubwa amempeleka shule akalipa kwamba tusiwe tunakusumbua the offering that we were getting i was pumping it all of it in crusades sadaka zote tuliweka kwenye mikutano za injili and pay a little allowances to the pastors that are ahead na kuwalipia kidogo kimshara wa chungaji tuliokuwa nao but as a family we never drew any salary in this church for a long time na kama familia hatukuwa tunachukua mshara kanisani kwa muda mrefu but god raised up specific people to make sure that everything we needed was met mungu aliyahakikisha mainwa watu kushukulikia mahitaji yetu one of the people was working in cop bank unamkumbuka alikuwa anaitwa nani yule mkamu Kililo. Mm. One of them was brother Kililo. Alikuwa ndugu Kililo. He made sure that we lacked nothing. 
Aliyahakikisha tukosi chochote. He was working in the bank. Alikuwa anafanya kwenye benki. And a few other women. Na akina dada wengine wa mama wazuri. All of them wote. I can show you this one was supporting this pastor. This one was doing it. This one was doing it. Today you ne- can't even imagine where they are. Mm. Naweza kukuonyesha huyu alimfadhili huyu akafadhili huyu. Leo hii umbali wamefika. Wezi atawaza. Because they used their resources to honor their spiritual parents. Walitumia rasilimali zao kuheshimu baba wazazi wao wa kiroho. Let me put it this way in love. Nikwambie hivi kwa upendo. When Pastor David has got to go to the supermarket to purchase things worth 200 shillings as a pastor he is cursing the church. Yaani Pastor David ametoka kwa nyumba yake ameenda super kununua vitu vya shilingi 200. Hiyo ni laana kwa kanisa. Never greet your pastor in the supermarket. Usimsalamie mchungaji wako kwenye supermarket. Haipasi. Never. Uh-huh. You should tell him sir I'm sorry that you came. Mwambie kwamba nasikitika ulikuja. What is it that you need? Ulikuwa unataka? Go and wait for me in the car. Wewe enda tu kwa gari, alafu niambie chini unataka. But when I'm, I'm not speaking to you alone, I'm speaking on live television. So I'm speaking to the crowds on all there out there. You need to make sure that your spiritual parents are well taken care of. Hakikisha wazazi wako kiroho wamelindwa vizuri. I am well taken care of. I would not be having this kind of storage right now if I wasn't being taken good care of. I'm Natuzwa. speaking about many others who are struggling. They are about to give up in ministry. They are they have the children have not even eaten and they come here every day. They come to the church every day. They cry to God every day and they go home hungry. That one should never happen in a congregation. Nazungumzia wengi tu ambao wanapita hali ngumu kwangu mimi naona nimelindwa nimejenga mnaweza ona lakini nalilia wale wengine nawapigia debe wale wengine Your pastor should never worry about rent Mchungaji wako asiwe na wasiwasi kafungiwa mlango at all at all That's why the Bible says God raised to I mean the, the church in Jerusalem they raised up deacons Ndio sababu kanisa la Yerusalemu wakasema washemazi wakuje they raised up able men watu ambao ni wa uwezo wana msuli people full of wisdom wamejawa hekima people full of faith wamejawa imani people full of good works wamejawa matendo mema those were the ones who were put in the rank of deacons hao ndio walihitimu kuitwa mashemazi the reason was that they should take care of the tables ni washukulikie mambo ya meza na meza ni vyakula and uh, they leave the ministers the pastors and the prophets and the apostles to take charge of the spiritual matters wakikisha manabii mitume wanaomba na kusoma neno if they are spending more time in prayer without worrying of what they will eat or what they will wear and whatever is happening in the church listen those men were powerful they carried miracles signs and wonders and god honored them with great miracles kwa sababu kama walichukua muda mwingi kanisani kuomba kusali kusoma neno miujiza mikubwa ilitendeka na watu kama hiyo deacons are not in the church to judge the pastor mashemazi hawako pale kanisani kubalia mchungaji miwani so that they control what he does eti kwamba wanaangalia eh eh hapa wanapitia supposed to enhance the ministry of the pastor mashemazi ni kubeba mikono na kuinua mikono ya wachungaji women leadership are supposed to make sure that the house of the pastor is well taken care of care of uongozi wa kina mama chakula kiwe kwa nyumba ya mchungaji thank you for one amen na imetoka kwa mama <laughs> This is how you grow you unlock supernatural things Even divyo unafungulia miujiza za kiungu Every time let me put it this way because I love you 
And I'm not saying because I want you to do it for me because I'm able. What I'm saying is so that you may you personally make a decision I want to unlock what God has in store for me. Look at someone and tell them who ask them who fuels your pastor's car. Mulize mtu hiyo gari ya mchungaji natumianga maji. Mulize. Have you seen sometimes the pastor Pastor David's car can stay there for a whole week or three weeks not moving. Umeona gari ya mchungaji David imekaa pale siku nyingi. Unafikiria ameweka inapumzika. He is telling you please <laughs> this is an opportunity for you to be blessed. Anakuambia kwamba hii ni fursa wewe ndio unangojelewa. So usiruhusu pastor wako mm. aende kwa petrol station kujaza gari na pesa yake. Eh? Kwa sababu anatumia hiyo gari kukujia wewe, kukuletea injili, kukuletea baraka, kukuletea kukuletea yale miujiza ambayo unayohitaji. Amen. Anatumia hiyo gari kukufikia wewe. Na kwa sababu anatumia hiyo gari kukufikia wewe si vizuri na si vyema mchungaji wako awe ndiye anatengeneza gari yake ikiharibika anatembea kutoka jua kali akitafuta njia anakuja na ndudhi mhm mm kanisani amenyinyia kwa ndudhi mhm mhm unajua ndudhi <laughs> Ana, anakuja ananuka petroli na grease maana gari imekwama wapi jua kali See anointing. I love you nasema haleluya tumebarikiwa. Umebarikiwa nini wewe? Si mnanipenda. I have to teach you principles that will bring you to unlock things that you don't know. Ni vizuri kufundisha kanuni zitakusaidia kujifungulia vitu ambavyo vinapita kipimo. Tusimame. Amen. Niwaombe. Amen. Praise God. When the Lord began to speak to me about this thing called honor, I began to see things I, I repented even myself. I repented. Because there are times I have spoken against my own pastors or against my own uh, fathers. Because I'm angry also or all I felt disappointed. I, I, I utter things that I should not have uttered. I have repented. I tell God please forgive me. I, I didn't know that this thing was Because when you speak against the rich, the birds of the air will hear it and they will go and tell it. The rich is not necessarily those people who have a lot of money. The rich are those people who have been elevated. They have better things than you have. They are richer than you in knowledge, richer than you in age, richer than you in, in anointing because you are not equal in anointing. So there is a wealth of knowledge in their lives. When you speak against those who carry resources, then you are telling yourself i don't need these resources to myself ukiongea vibaya maana wao ni matajiri kwa sababu wana rasilimali kuliko wewe kwa hivyo ukiongea kinyume chao umeongea kinyume cha rasilimali na zitakupea mgongo precious father thank you baba wetu tunakushukuru you are god of mercy wewe ni mungu mwingi wa rehema and we submit our souls to you where we have not walked rightly before you, where we have not honored you, where we have disrespected you. Father, forgive us. The Lord from today, you'll help us to have an understanding and a knowledge on what to do when we ought to do it. Every barrier that has stood against this your children who are under the sound of my voice 
either here present or online or on television. I pray that you release mercy and forgive, oh God. May you remember mercy and restore us back to the right place. Heal us, oh God. Open the spirit of our understanding that from today we may walk in honor knowing that you are God who deserves all honor. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I said, tonight, we're going to find out whether the devil that you serve or the God that I serve has more power. We believe in the healing gospel that must be preached through high-quality media production and the latest cinematic technology reaching the unreached all over the world. The Word taught, revealed, expanded, expounded and embedded deep into the heart of mankind awakens the mind to focus rightfully. Yes, darkness cannot stand in the way of the light and the light of the world is here. Walk in the light and live a good life. Watch Redeemer's Voice TV available on Bamba TV, Go TV, Stir Times and digital free to air decoders and TVs. Redeemer's Voice TV bringing the liberating truth.